We're gonna talk today about Facebook. Obviously a huge platform. And I wanna go through some of the initial pieces on this that are important. Number one, you have to have a great profile. So I wanna go through some of these elements before I get into the steps. These are, this is the bonus section I'm giving you before we even get into all the other key elements. First thing you see on my Facebook profile right here is a huge banner. My market, professional speakers, people I've trained or seminar promoters want to look at my social profile and see if I'm worthy to get booked on their stage. Well, I'm showing right here an audience where I spoke I think it was three or four years ago, I don't remember, I have to go back and check, I think it was four years ago in Tokyo where I was the keynote speaker with a crowd of 6,000 people. So this is what I'm showing as my banner background. This speaks volumes and I have tested my background photos on LinkedIn, I've tested it in ads which is where the money matters. This isn't about ego, this is about return on investment. Showing this picture proves my statements of being a world-class international speaker. I'm proving it right here. It goes without words. Do I wanna add something to it? Sure. The other piece you're seeing is my profile photo. This particular photo I've used specifically per the direction of a good friend named Surya Sparks out of Singapore. She's an influencer and knows Facebook backward and forward, upside down. She suggested, and I followed her advice, to take a smiling profile picture because the last one I had before was me in a suit looking pretty stern and I was smiling, but I was facing the camera straight, erect, as I knew I should be. I thought wrong. She suggested in this photo, because I'm looking a little more professional wearing a jacket in this banner pic, to dress like this and be smiling a lot more casual. And here's the key distinction, and listen to this closely. My head is tilted. What happens with animals that tilt their head? They're showing vulnerability, the ability to approach. Approachability is there. Whereas if Mitch is here looking stern straight at you, wearing a suit and tie, people could be resistant to that. Who can resist my puppy dog face? I'm smiling, my head is tilted to the side, and I'm saying, oh. Now you have to imagine, maybe use some creativity, he could be perceived as cute and approachable because that is my head to the side. But let's get into some of the mechanics. Those are a couple of things I wanted to touch on and we can do when you comment below from this video. If you want part two after this, because there are so many things to cover on how to be a recognized authority on Facebook and what's worked for me and what I've improved over the years. Quite different. Watch the clock. Facebook is for weekend posts. Twitter is for weekdays, where it's a lot of little short pieces of, I think, 140 characters on Twitter. And Instagram attracts a crowd for dinners, out, and vacations, where it's photo-focused, more about lifestyle. But Facebook is for weekends. People have time to go through and will spend time there. And if you're posting on Facebook during the week, you're gonna get a better response mean more interaction between the hours of 6 p.m. and 9 p.m., that three-hour window. So be aware of that. Make sure you post and delete. If your post isn't drawing any likes, any shares, or any comments in the first half hour, delete it. Didn't work. People didn't resonate with it. They're getting so much feedback. It just didn't work. Maybe you had a bad hair day. Who knows? Anything could be the reason, just delete it. I mean, I've got posts here on, on mine that may not work that well. And this one, for example, did work. This is a picture of me in Tokyo. It was a repost from 2017 where I'm watching the sumo matches with some friends. And I got 
11 likes out of this and a few hearts from people. It was a repost from four years ago. And it showed me smiling along with three other men smiling while we were sitting on our knees, very uncomfortable watching a comfortable event of sumo wrestlers. Facebook's news algorithm shows that posts get lots of quick likes skyrocket to the top of other people's feeds. So your post must work quickly, that way you get more love. Okay, one of the great posts that I see continually, and it has worked for me, and we're gonna show examples, is ask compelling questions. One of the things that will get you attention, you have to be careful about this based on where you live and the political sensitivity, social sensitivity, Asking compelling questions. Do you think there was justice served with Officer Coven recently in Minneapolis when he was convicted of these charges against George Floyd? Oh my God, that's a socially hot topic. You're gonna get a reaction from a wide scope of people, a wide variety of people. Now I think most people lean one in one direction. But asking that question will most assuredly get you a response. The other thing you can do to bump up the response when asking a compelling question is support it with either one, an image, or a short video clip. If there was a video clip of him placing the knee on the neck of the late George Floyd, Oh my gosh, you're gonna get an emotional response. Now be careful with this because the questions you ask, and remember this is these are digital footprints that are permanent. And if you take a position to say, okay, do you think that justice was served is asking a question. Or do you think Chauvin deserved that stiff sentence? I don't. What do you think, please? Be careful when talking about politics or religion, because that divides people. You hear about that. Those are the two topics you never bring up on a first date. Well, many of the people on Facebook, you'll never date or you'll never meet. So until you know somebody intimately who's sitting in your living room talking about religion and politics, oh boy, be careful. And people like to get involved by feeling smart and contributing good answers. And the more you take and stake a position, the more deeply you're going to f get compartmentalized by people out on the, in the Facebook world. So be careful about that. I mean, and it's okay if you have a religious right Facebook page and you have a religious right job, you are a minister, obviously, you're gonna attract people that believe like you believe. And you're not gonna bring in people who are from a completely different religious group. It's going to be more like people like you. Pace your posts, meaning post something every three to four days. That's enough to let people know that you're active and you're engaging, but if you post three to four times a day, you could become annoying and they might unfriend you. You might have an opposite effect. And here's a little tip. Pose with a celebrity. Let me show you an example. I have pictures. I have shared the stage with well-known celebrities like Sir Richard Branson, Don Donald Trump. Now, let me share an important point there. I have also a picture with the former prime minister of Thailand, name opposite. Posing with a politician who's got a clean record and he or she has retired may have benefits. Posing with a politician who is later exposed as a corrupt politician can backfire. I shared the stage with Sir Richard Branson in London some years ago. He's not a politician, he's a well-known business billionaire, okay? A picture with him is fine. A picture with Donald Trump, whom I shared the stage with 20 years ago in, in America, not good. Unless I'm in the Republican Party and I'm an advocate of Donald Trump 
then that can help boost my image. But if I'm a neutral polit political stance individual and I don't want to offend anybody, I don't think it would be a good idea for me to use that photo today, especially after the riots that took place. But having a picture with the former prime minister of Thailand, pretty safe because he left unscathed. He's no longer in politics from what I understand and he was well liked during his time in office. So be careful about the celebrity and whether or not that celebrity resonates with your niche and your message. Just to have a picture with a celebrity, if I took a picture, if I were supporting something with boxers and I took a picture with Mike Tyson, it would garner a lot of response. And it would also probably deselect certain people who believed he had committed the crimes that he was accused of and or convicted of. So be careful when it comes to celebrities. And if you get a picture next to a well-known celebrity, you're gonna get a quick 50 likes or maybe 100 likes or even more when I've shown pictures of this in the past and it does work for attention reasons. Same goes for a location. I've had pictures with the Patronus Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I'm looking up like this. I've had pictures at the Burj Al Arab Hotel, the world's only seven-star hotel. Pictures sitting on camels while I'm on a tour uh, in, in Dubai. Uh, pictures with the backdrop of the pyramids in Giza while I was in Cairo, Egypt. You get the idea, this type of Facebook post will earn you likes possible shares and or comments if you add a question, but the photo itself can earn you a lot of attention. Juice your photos, meaning make them look great. If you're, you wanna sweeten them up, you wanna edit them, add some light to them, there are all sorts of little editing features that are available with these apps today or if you're a Photoshop expert, make it look juicy. Photos look juicy. Add some color, make them lighter, make them more appealing. If you're eating pizza and the picture's grainy, maybe add some steam so it looks steaming hot and delicious. Get people involved in your experience and you'll get more likes. Be different. How do you be different? Well, well I happen to use rubber chickens. I use all sorts of devices when I teach people in my speaking mastery program. I'm different than every other speaker trainer out there on multiple levels. I like to think because I've spoken in 61 countries, it's part of my pitch. I'm also different in the sense that I use a lot of props to break through and to allow people to tap into that child inside. What is your way of being different? I've created mine, it just hit me, and nobody does what I do. Do something that is different in your post and you will stand out. Holding a rubber chicken for me has worked enormously. I can always bank on lots of likes and comments with that. During major news events, posts that can be different than everyone else, can be well received. If you've got a different spin, like I mentioned George Floyd recently and Chauvin, who was the officer found guilty of, of murder. If you're saying exactly what everybody else is saying, you're gonna get sort of an aha, well, ho-hum response. Have a different spin in your post. You will get more respect and more traction out of them. Like, share and comment on other people's posts. Friends, colleagues, people's posts that you admire. Like I had a post that came that I saw in someone else's feed recently by Einstein. I thought it was great. I then shared it, took it, shared it on my timeline. It got shared and shared and shared multiple times because it was a great quote. Basically, stay away from negative people because they only bring you down was the essence of the quote. People loved it, but it was, came from Einstein, so it had credibility and it got shared. And when you like and share other people's comments, they'll do the same for you. It's the rule of reciprocity. And that's how you create traction and a good community of people. So this is how you become an authority on Facebook. 
part one, we're gonna have part two that goes deeper to create much more virality of your posts in a follow-up video. Hope you like this one and we'll see you on the next video.